Hi everyone, this is Joe. Uh, in the last episode of this uh, Double Digit Q series, I was looking at uh, a 9 by 9 game, and I wanted to uh, pick up where that one left off. Let's see, in the previous episode, I first uh, went over a game I played and uh, looked at some improvements, and then I looked at a particular uh, problem involving an invasion on the third line. So let's uh, start off. Let's see, say I'm black, I place a stone here, white places a stone here, and I place a stone here. Oh, by the way, um, <clears throat> I just learned recently that the polite way to start a game, if you're going to play in one of the corners, is to play in the upper right corner. So if you can imagine yourself sitting down at the, uh, at the go board, you're sitting on this side, your opponent is facing you on the other side, and you place your stone in the upper right corner, that's all the way across the board, and at your opponent's left, his right will be this stone here. So I guess the idea is that if he wants to respond in the corner, he gets to play uh, a move without having to reach across the board. <laughs> that's a, as far as I can tell, that's, that appears to be the, uh, the uh, motivation there. He can play a, a move at a, with his right hand and in the corner, and it's uh, very convenient to him. So it's kind of a, a token of respect to the stronger player. When you have the black pieces, then uh, your opponent is the stronger player. So that's the convention, playing in the upper right corner with your first stone. Um, okay, so let's go back to the game here, here, and then... Um, what I was looking at in the previous video was this uh, invasion right away, but breaking up these two stones. And, and with black, I was trying to secure this territory on the side between the two stones. And I was trying to play like this, put a stone underneath, and then try and, um, and secure this territory here, and then later branch out um, and expand. Uh, maybe even pick up a third corner, a corner if I get up the chance. Um, but um, I sense have run into problems with this, and I think I talked about it a little bit uh, the last time. White can try and attack that stone instead of just uh, uh, extending. And then if you cut it off, which is what I recommended, uh, White can attack this stone, and if you cut it off again, what I said was uh, in the previous video, if White takes, you can place a stone on top, attack this guy, he fills in, and then say play something like this. Basically try to cut off this group of stones and uh, and win it. It doesn't have enough space to make uh, two eyes. And so uh, these stones though are weak. I mean white can counterattack, but it seemed like the fight uh, worked to black's advantage. So that's kind of where I left it in the last video. Uh, what I've discovered since then, I, I tried these ideas out by playing them against stronger players. So uh, um, let's see, I played here. No, my opponent played there. I played underneath. Uh, he went for the counterattack, so I played this like I calculated. Uh, white went here. I cut off on this side, but uh, White didn't take the stone right away, and he found a stronger move, and uh, maybe knew this ahead of time. Um, and it's something to keep in mind. It's kind of a general rule. If uh, you, there's no hurry to take this stone, it can't escape. So why waste a move taking it? What what White can do here is strengthen this stone, which is splitting my forces. And now this is much more difficult. I, you know, again, I can try and turn this into a fight by trying to surround this stone, but um, it can escape. I can't uh, win that stone. And if it ever needs an extra liberty, um, he, uh, white can always capture the stone on uh, h5, and that will give that group another liberty. So it looks like this all favors white. In fact, white, white won pretty convincingly. I got no territory at all over here. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so I don't think uh, connecting underneath is the right answer. So I tried this idea out. I was playing somebody else. Let's see. And I tried invading uh, in between two stones on the third rank. And, um, and then my opponent played here, played on top of my stone. Rather than playing underneath and trying to connect, just played on top and tried to trap this stone. And this worked out in White's favor pretty well. Let's see. I tried a counterattack. And then White cut me off this way. And uh, with this move, um, both these stones became kind of weak. Let's see if I attack here, this stone just gets strengthened. Mm, yeah, I mean, I could have tried something like that. Somehow, though, I, I, I wasn't able to uh, survive over here. So this turns into a fight, and uh, it, maybe it favors the side that has the uh, stone on top. Um, so anyway, I tried this myself, <laughs> once again in another game. Uh, I was facing a stronger opponent, he invaded, and I tried putting a stone on top. And then he didn't try the counterattacking move. What he tried was first strengthening his stone. I went here, and then he cut this way. 
and uh, and this looks to be okay for white. This turns into a fight. Maybe this fight is more even than what we saw in some of the previous examples. So uh, this stone is weak, um, but these two stones can be attacked as well. Um, in the game, I played um, this h3 move, strengthening the stone on g3, but that's a mistake because after uh, this move, f6, these two stones only have two liberties, and these two stones have three liberties. So I'm behind in the capturing race. Say if I play here now, uh, white's going to actually capture those two stones, and something like that happened in the game. So I think in this uh, position, you have to uh, leave this stone here on g3 for a bit and first uh, go after these two stones. So now uh, black is ahead in the capturing race. These two black stones here have uh, three liberties and these only have two. And white can counterattack that stone, descends, and um, like I said, this turns into some kind of a fight. So uh, I'm going to try it uh, this way. <clears throat> well, I've been doing two things. In some games, uh, instead of playing uh, all the way to the, uh, you know, this is like a three-space jump. And by the conventional rules, the most you can jump is two spaces and still be safe. So one idea is just to play a two-space jump and not worry about those complicated fights. And the other damn idea, idea I want to try is uh, I want to continue with this three-space jump idea and try placing a stone on top and seeing if... Um, if I can uh, get a good result out of this fight. So that's where things stand. Just wanted to <laughs> update you on my latest uh, experiments and innovations. Oh, and if you guys ever have a, a similar situation, let me know how it turns out and what you think uh, the right moves are there. Okay, let's see if I can uh, get a game. Uh, here's a game. Let's see. Oh, we're evenly matched here. Andre at 18Q and I'm at 18Q. And uh, I must be slightly stronger since he went, moved first. So, well, let's start with the corners. This kind of setup I've seen before. And um, I think this usually turns out pretty good for white when black tries to grab the center. I'm not not too impressed with this idea. So... Um, let's go this way. Before I go underneath, let's strengthen this one of those cornerstones. And now going underneath should be a successful idea here. And let's see if he plays at uh, d7. I'm going to try and block at uh, d8. And he cut into the corner. Yeah, so he's going like that. Um, so I want to strengthen this stone too before blocking underneath. Okay, and he goes like that. Yeah, I was about to come to that square. I was about to play c4 and uh, uh, put that stone in Atari and force him to defend. Maybe I could have thrown that in uh, before playing there because maybe he had to respond. See, are there other stones I can place in Atari? Let's think about this one. Is he going to capture this stone? Maybe. But why don't I get underneath this guy? If I can get, you know, this kind of L-shaped region and uh, maybe invade a little bit over here, this should be good. Okay, so he is uh, allowing me to, to establish this corner. And then, uh, well, let's grab this corner too. So if I get three corners and two sides, that's usually enough to win, especially when you have the white pieces. So let's go um, here, make this corner bigger. So unless he can invade somehow or cut, maybe there's some cuts here he can take advantage of. I think this is a winning game for white. And we'll see when I count up. <laughs> you don't want to count my... Oh, he made the uh, classic uh, faulty hinge mistake here. See these three stones I can place here. Place a stone here, and he can't um, do anything. There's no stone he can capture 
before I grab those three stunts. And once again, I don't have to take right away. I can play here. I can go there. It's better for me to play here. And now he can't. Um, now he can't penetrate. He goes. He could try and grab an extra point by playing at a2. So I'll go ahead and play at a2. And then he had to fill in there. So that point at a1 is dame. That's uh, neutral territory. It's no points for anybody. So let's just check the um, cuts here. That's no good. I'll capture it. He plays here. I'll play there. And then I'll capture it before he can attack anything if it plays here. I should protect one of these cuts on this side, perhaps. He cuts here, I go here, and he cuts there. It's a little bit tricky. So let's protect one of those cuts. And see if he finds a useful move. I can gain a little more space out here, or I can just uh, capture those three stones. Yeah, so he stops me from doing that. Let's go ahead and capture those stones. That'll allow me to um, um, start enlarging my territory in this direction. And um, he never really stopped that. Let's see, if I play here, he can cut me off. So I play there. And let's, uh, let's see, if he goes here, I capture it goes here, I play there, um, I could cut here but he could capture, so I'm going to just pass here, I think uh, that's it for this game. And we'll see if uh, Black has a way to uh, break in, yeah, so he just played that move, that had no effect on the score. That's just filling in a, a, a dame point. You do have to be careful because it takes away a liberty, so you have to make sure there's nothing. Uh, yeah, no, no follow-on. Okay, so what's the score? Yeah, 34. Yeah, one by quite a bit. Yeah, the corners and sides. If you can get, uh, to, you know, two corners, three corners and two sides, you're almost certainly winning. In this case, um, uh, yeah, I got a bit of this side too, and. Um, and he didn't get much of this corner. He tried to take a little of that corner away. Okay, uh, well, that's it for this video. See you guys later. Bye.